Hey guys, this is Jerry. Welcome to the channel. Today is another video about the MG ZS EV common questions people generally ask before they buy the vehicle or after they purchase the vehicle. As always, I'll leave all the timestamps down below for you to skip forward if you wish to. And if you do find this video helpful, please subscribe and like down below. All right, first question, common question. How do I find my odometer? How do I find how many k's the vehicle has traveled? It's pretty simple. Now we want to go to the digital dashboard and go in the left or right arrow button. So for example, we are going back to the center display and you can see the odometer is over here, 2,300 kilometers on this vehicle. It's pretty simple. If you can't find it, just keep going right or left and eventually you will be able to find this vehicle driving information, find odometer underneath. You can also change your current journey, change your current journey if you wish as well. And the second one, we all know the vehicle does come with the tire pressure monitoring system and the common question is people ask can you change the unit from bar to PSI or to even to KPA so it's it's kind of standard um, unit in New Zealand and for which the quick answer is no we haven't found a way to change that as this as far as I know but it's pretty easy you can quickly use your smartphone to do a Google search in case you're stuck somewhere and then just use Google search to search PSI to bar or KPA to bar, then convert the units. You can easily find the correct units if you need. To find the correct temperature, it's on your driver door. If you open the door, it's on the, it, there is a small sticker that you can find out. In the next question, people generally ask is about charging. So can I set my charge to 80% or to 70% to 90%, something like that on the new ZS EV? The quick answer is, if you're driving the standard range in New Zealand, which come with a 50 kilowatt hour battery um, that offer you the 320k range, you won't be able to set it to charge to percentage. You can only do schedule charging between certain times, and then if you don't do it, the vehicle will charge from zero to 100% and until or until the charge stops. Uh, but if you're driving the long range, which come with a 72 kilowatt hour battery pack, we offer you the 440k range, you will be able to set it up. There are two ways. One way is go to the screen and go to the charging setting over here. That way you can drag this left or right to do any percentage, for example, 80%, 90%, whichever you like, or if you drag it all the way to 100%, that means it will fully charge. Another way is to go to your smartphone mobile and to go to the charging management, you can manually set the charging settings again to either 80% or 100%, whichever you like. So once it's all set it up, the vehicle will only charge to a certain percentage, for example, 80% if you prefer. The next common question is people will ask is, um, do the blind spot detection give you warning if you are actually indicating or if you're getting close to the blind spot detection uh, warning all that things the quick answer is no there's no audible warning on the blind spot instead it will flash so the way how the vehicle flashes is when you drive forward and there's a vehicle traveling behind you if the if its speed is higher than your vehicle is approaching your vehicle uh, approaching your vehicle that means the blind spot monitor light will come on will have a yellow light on each end uh, whichever it is and then if you do indicate at the same time that light will flash for you but it's not going to give you audible warning as far as i know mazda or mercedes cars will give you audible warning but mg does not do that on any of the vehicles just to be clear and next one and the common question is people ask does the vehicle automatically lock when I walk away? And the quick answer for that question is no, or generally no. And so let's say if you power off the vehicle, you get out of the car, you forgot to lock the vehicle, unfortunately the vehicle will not lock itself, or the doors will remain unlocked. There's only one scenario the vehicle will lock itself, is if you are in distance, or if you're close to the door, you actually press the key plate, the unlock button or you press the door handle the unlock button the vehicle all the doors are unlocked but you didn't open any of the doors and you didn't pull the door handle you didn't open the boot at all then after about 30 seconds the vehicle will automatically locks itself that's the only way it will lock itself otherwise if you switch off the car you walk away it's not gonna uh, unlock all the doors there's no auto lock for this particular feature and next one is about the key again can i lock the key inside the car 
or let's say in emergency situation, I lock, left the key inside the car, I press the door handle, is it, is the car is going to be locked? The quick answer is no, uh, or mostly no. So as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, the vehicle will feel the key inside the car. There's a sensor talking to each other. That means if you press the door handle, nothing, would, nothing will happen, and the vehicle will not lock itself because you still have the key inside the car. Uh, I could say the only scenario you can possibly lock the key inside the car is you have two keys. One key is left inside, the other key is outside. You use the key blade on the other key to lock the vehicle from distance. Otherwise, generally speaking, you will not be able to lock the vehicle um, or lock the key inside if the key is left inside through the door handle, the, the push button. So hopefully that makes sense. And the second last question for this particular video is how much does it cost to charge the vehicle? How much does it cost to charge the vehicle at home, generally speaking? If it's in public charging station, unfortunately this can be case to case. Some public charging stations are free, some will charge you somewhere around, let's say, in New Zealand, 70 cents um, per kilowatt hour, something like that. I'm not talking about that. But charging at home, how much does it cost? So to, to quickly calculate this, first thing you need to know uh, which vehicle you're driving and which particular battery pack you're driving. Let's say you're driving the vehicle with standard range with a 50 kilowatts hour battery and you're draining the vehicle completely zero, for example, and then you're charging from zero to 100% uh, at home. That means, generally speaking, in theory, it will cost you um, 50 kilowatts hour to power up or to charge up this vehicle from zero to 100%. But generally speaking, when the power gets transferred from your house to the vehicle, there will be some, you know, energy loss during the trans transfer, everything like that. So it's pretty standard. That means in theory, it's not gonna cost, it's gonna, going to cost a little bit more maybe, but we can just put 50 as an example. And then in New Zealand, let's say you're paying 30 cents uh, per kilowatt hour in terms of your electricity bill. That means 50 times 30 cents will be around $15 to fully charge the vehicle allows you to drive up to 320k on WLTP range. So this is how how that calculation works. You can obviously calculate how your, your, your battery is, calculate what based on your rates, everything. If you're driving the 72 kilowatt hour battery, that means charging from zero to 100% will cost you around 72 kilowatt hour um, electricity. That means you time whatever the, the cents you're paying, 30 cents, that will come down to something around 21 point something dollars. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick calculation to give you guidance on how much it will cost you to run the vehicle or to charge the vehicle uh, if you're charging at home. But if you're charging at a public charging station, this will be completely different. And the last, probably one of the most important question or common question people do ask is what happens if the battery runs out? So first thing, the vehicle give you, will give you all the indication of your range to empty on your dashboard, on your screen, everything. It will give you all the warning, give you all the indication, give you the uh, orange light or uh, red light telling you that your battery is low, is low, is low. Eventually it will go into a turtle mode as well. That means you can only drive the vehicle in super eco mode, uh, stuff like that. So this is the vehicle will try to do, like a petrol car before it runs out of petrol. It's it's gonna give you all the warnings, stuff like that. But if eventually you still runs out of the battery, and unfortunately the vehicle will be stuck. And unfortunately the vehicle will not move. Just like the petrol car, if you runs out of petrol or diesel, and the vehicle will not move at all. You cannot go into the, you cannot switch on, you can switch on probably electronics, but you cannot uh, switch on the motor to be able to drive the vehicle going forward or backwards. In that case, doesn't matter, you just need to charge the vehicle. But the good news is, if you're in New Zealand, this is the policy in New Zealand, as far as I know, but whether it's a policy in Australia or the market, you do need to check your local dealer. So MG New Zealand come with a seven year roadside assistance, as long as you service your vehicle with MG for the service interval. And that also means, in case you actually run out of battery and you're stuck on the road, you can call the MG roadside assistance. They can help you to tow the vehicle away. Obviously the towing will not be charged. And then they will tow you to a nearest charging station, whether it's slow charge or fast charge. And then the charging fees is gonna be paid by yourself. 
but at least you're not stuck on the road. So that's quite a good thing about the MG New Zealand Roads and Assistance. Hopefully the other country will be the same, but you might as well check with your local dealership or with your policy in your area. And another thing about the battery runs out is even if your battery runs out, you can still get the car into neutral to at least push the vehicle, at least roll it forward if you need to. So don't don't worry, there's still a possible way the vehicle will not just completely lock, lock itself or anything like that in terms of the battery runs out situation. So that's it. That's all the information for this particular video. There will be definitely more videos in the future about this particular episode. There's so many questions about the new Zenda CV, um, but different people will have different you know, questions here and there. I'll try to generate some more videos in the future. As always, please subscribe and like if you enjoy the channel. Thank you very much.